hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Anna and it has been a hot minute as per usual since I have sat down and done a chit chatty video with you um, and this is a, a normal chit chat video this video has a purpose and that purpose you can tell by the title um, I have applied to EPIC which is the English program in Korea um, which is a program that allows native English speakers to go and teach colloquial English to uh, Korean students essentially and I've been keeping this a secret for about four months now so um, I finally feel comfortable talking about it um, because I have passed the interview process and I wanted to kind of give you a rundown of my whole application process some tips and tricks for you if you're applying and just some general information because I know so many people are constantly searching this up looking for tips and tricks and a lot of the videos um, <clears throat> are like within a year or two but a lot of them are also uh, um, like pretty outdated so I feel like giving my take will help those who are recently applying and are going through a similar uh, pr application process the way that I am so if you're interested in my application process or are going through it yourself then just please keep watching just as a forewarning, my window is open, so if you hear cars driving by, just kind of ignore it. So, um, I do have a rough timeline. It's upside down. And I have like a thousand papers here. Hold on. Wait. Technical difficulties. I have this timeline here, so if I'm looking down at a sheet of paper, that's just why. Um, and um, I just wanted to give a more accurate... I sat and I looked through all of my messages, all of my videos, because I did record it, like as I went through it, but a lot of the clips were just kind of all over the place, which makes sense because this timeline's all over the place, and I just couldn't find a continuity, and it was a little frustrating, so I felt like a, just a regular sit-down chit-chat video that is more all together, um, instead of me rambling on on about, like, different things, um, made more sense. So, first things first, you want to apply to Epic. What are some requirements? There are a couple. Um, it's not like you can just apply. You do need a bachelor's degree. It can be in anything in the world, but you do need a bachelor's degree. Not be a associate. It could be anything above a bachelor's, but you have to at least have a bachelor's degree. If you do not have a teaching certificate, that means you did not major in education. You don't. You're not going alternate where you don't have your certification right here, right now. You have to get a TEFL. TESOL or CELTA and there are a thousand resources on the EPIC website and on the internet um, that can go into further detail on the differences between the TEFL, TESOL and CELTA for the sake of time in this video and because I don't need those um, I suggest you look those up yourself. Um, I'll leave a few resources linked down below. Um, if you do have a teaching certificate you just have to have proof of that so you just print out your certificate. I as you know, do you have my teaching certificate? So I didn't need to do a TOEFL course. So you do need a bachelor, uh, a teaching certificate of some kind, and um, you, oh, if you happen to have gone to like a dual language school, so for example in Canada, in, Providence, in provinces like um, Quebec or in South Africa, sometimes your schooling isn't 100% in English. I think the requirement is from 7th grade on your education has to be in English. So if you went to a dual, a dual language uh, high school, I think there are some complications or it automatically nulls you from being able to apply, which sucks. But um, definitely um, you can email Epic and they will get back to you if you have any questions regarding stuff like that. Um, and I don't really know enough to really delve into that because I was born in the US and went to only English speaking schools. I don't have to do that process but I do know a couple of people who struggled because of that. So um, definitely do your research on that if that applies to you. And that is about it. Those are like kind of like the main requirements. Now there are two application periods. I'm going through the spring intake application period so that means that I will start at the beginning of their school year in the US and I think most conventional European schools we start in like the fall August September time range in Korea their school year starts in February so I'm going to be there for the start of their new school year versus the fall intake which more aligns to our education system that um, application uh, 
that intake happens in August. So it makes more sense for Americans uh, to kind of do that route, but it makes more sense in Korea to go the other route if you don't want to go in the middle of the school year. Um, just something to keep in mind. And then the timelines are also completely different. So if you're applying in the um, for spring intake, the applications open up August 1st. Um, and unless it falls on a weekend, it is August 1st that the application is available to you if you are applying directly. If you are applying directly for the fall intake, then it is February 1st. A few words of warning, and things are always changing. That's Korean culture. They're constantly changing, and they're very last minute changes, so get used to that. Um, but there are some rumors going through the mill that fall intake is slowly getting phased out so that there's only spring intake. So that's something to maybe keep in mind if you're thinking about applying. Just, you know, food for thought. Um, and so because of that, the, the timelines are going to be a bit different than if you were applying in the spring, for spring intake. So um, I'm going through a recruiter. There are two ways you can apply. Directly, yourself, not with a recruiter or a recruiting company. Some people don't like the middleman because you will never directly deal with Epic aside from your interview. You will always go through your recruiter asking them questions, sending them your documents, everything through them. Versus if you apply directly, you have, you can have Epic as your support system and they are your support system, but um, it's, if you mess up something in your documents, there's less kind of leeway than with a recruiter is kind of my um, kind of feel of that as well as you just have an extra safety net upon arrival um, versus with Epic, once you kind of go through the process and you are placed, that's kind of it. They kind of don't really deal with you all that much aside from um, like a, like orientation. So something to keep in mind, once again there's plenty of blogs on like differences between applying directly and recruiter. I will say those who apply directly do have a faster process time um, except y you'll come to find out that I'm like this weird, it's I don't know by what grace of God, but I'm kind of along the same timeline as those who are going directly, which I still don't know how that happened. But if you're applying directly, you can apply directly August 1st, send that bad boy in. However, if you're going through a recruiter, your application will not be sent in until the first like Monday of September. So this year it fell on September 3rd. So everyone who went through a recruiter who finished their applications before, you know, their deadline, before September 1st or whatever, um, their applications all went in September 3rd. I don't know in what order they go in or how it is determined that your number is, but there's a number system and you get like some number in line. Kind of roughly is my thought process of how that goes. So I hope this is making sense. So <clears throat> in terms of me, myself, and I, July uh, 16th is when I reached out, or well, a little bit earlier than that, so a couple of days before like July 10th, I did some research on recruiters when I started like really considering applying for spring intake. And then July um, 14th, I got an email from uh, Alistair, my recruiter with Korean Horizons, who wanted to have a chit chat with me, kind of a preliminary interview type of deal to see if I'm really serious about this, kind of get a feel of my personality, and vice versa for me to feel him out and feel if we could have a good recruiter, uh, applicant, you know, relationship type of deal. And so July 16th, that phone call happened, and um, I decided that I did want to go with Korean Horizons, I did want to go the recruiter route. And from that moment on, we uh, kind of had an understanding that we were going to be working together to go through this application process. Um, and so I started my application, I started using the fall one, which is something you can do to get a feel. So you do have to have a lesson plan in it, you do have to answer a few essay questions, and they're not very long. Um, and you have to like, you know, fill out all those, you know, information like your schooling, your degree, etc. Um, so I know you're probably freaking out if you're, if you've never written a lesson plan, lesson plan before and you're like, how do I do this? There is a million and one resources out there. I can't say that enough. There's so much out there that will help you. And if you're taking a TEFL course currently, then that should help you with like formatting. And there are very clear directions on how to format your lesson plan within the application itself. But wayguk.org is an amazing website that a lot of TEFL teachers that are in Korea or were in Korea, um, you know, 
know, share the lesson plans. Kind of like teachers pay teachers here in the United States, but it's for teaching English for language. Uh, so, um, you know, don't worry too much about the lesson plan. They really just want to see if you can kind of coherently put a lesson plan together. They're not expecting perfection. They're not expecting, you know, the most amazing tenured teacher lesson plan ever. Like, most people who apply to Epic are not teachers. So they don't expect, like, a teacher level <laughs> lesson plan, if you will. Okay, so August 1st, applications open. Direct applicants can send them in, like, Korean Standard Time, 12 o'clock midnight, August 1st for them, um, which would be, like, September, not September, uh, July 31st for us, if that makes sense. So you can do that. Um, recruiters, your application won't go in until the first Monday of September. Cool. Are we good with that? So, August 8th, I found out I had to redo my whole lesson plan. I did it on emotions and feelings, and it was pretty basic. A lot of people send it in, send that in, because it's the, probably the most basic EFL lesson plan you can start with, which in my thought process, I was like, oh, that makes sense. But for a recruiter, they really want their applicants to stand out and shine and get the best possible rating you can get. So he told me to redo it and gave me some prompts and I changed my whole entire lesson plan. And that only took a couple of days. I had that back in by like August 15th. August 17th, I went to go do my background check. So um, requirements, uh, the documents that are required of you are an apostle diploma, um, an apostle background check. Your diploma also needs to be notarized as well. Keep that in mind. Um, two university transcripts, official, so they need to be sealed. Um, two passport pictures, um, two by two inches. I think that's four by five, four by five for centimeters. And um, what else? If you have a teaching certificate, your teaching certificate, your intent to complete your TEFL certificate, if you don't have that, and um, just your signed application. That's for when you send in your documents. This is way down the line, but just to apply, you just need two original letters of recommendation signed in ink. So for the process of applying, you could have a scan because you're going to scan it over anyway, but when it comes to mailing your documents in, you need that original ink signature paper. Don't get a copy. Don't get a scanned image and print that off. It's not going to fly. You're not going to, you're not, your documents aren't going to get accepted. But for the application itself, you can have this scanned image because you're scanning it anyway. Just make sure it's original ink signature, okay? So, um, background check, I got that. My first letter of recommendation came around that time and then about like a week later, so around August 20th, my last letter of recommendation came in and my application was all set to be sent for September 3rd. So, um, I went for a background check August 17th. I am fortunate enough where, you know, spending the money to get my documents done before I even know if I have an interview was okay with me. I was willing to shell out that money. One thing you have to know, it is not cheap to apply to Epic. Keep that in mind. Your money's going. <laughs> Your money is going, um, and so you have to either budget accordingly and you can go two routes, you can do what I did and start getting your documents early, which I kind of highly suggest if you're able to, um, or you can kind of hold off until you hear that you have an interview and then start doing it, but your background check is like the time killer. And oddly enough, that's what I got the quickest because I had some problems with my diploma, okay? <laughs> A lot of problems. Um, so what I did was I went to Monu, not Monu, Lisa, I went to uh, Biometrics and I got my results within like an hour. Trucks. So rude. Accurate Biometrics and I got my fingerprints live scanned. Um, you can roll them, you know, go to the police station and get the, the fingerprints done there. Um, and mail them in. That is a little bit longer of a process, but maybe like a week or two. But I live pretty close to um, a live scan location. So I went, did that, and I got my results within about an hour. And I chose to go the um, expedite route in terms of apostling my uh, background check, like I said. And that takes about a week. I went through Monument Visa, and it costs about $55 to do that. You can just, you know, mail it in to directly to get it apostled, and that's a lot cheaper. 
it takes about a week or two longer. Um, so, you know, if you've got some time on your hands and you're okay with waiting, you can go that route and it's like a lot cheaper, like eight bucks versus how I went, which was $55. But like I said, I was okay with spending that because I'd rather have it here and now. Um, so that's me. Uh, August 28th is when I got it back, my Apostle. So I got it August 17th. I shipped it out, um, I think August 18th or 19th if I'm correct, and then I got it back the 28th, so roughly about, like, a week. Um, let's see what else. <sighs> September 3rd, my app was submitted. And in that time, I was waiting for my diploma because I got it rejected because I didn't notarize it the first time. So please make sure that your diploma is notarized. You cannot just like directly apostolate, even if it's like a duplicate and I got a duplicate. Um, so just keep that in mind. You do have to notarize it. You have to sign the notary. <laughs> I had a lot of problems and um, so I had to resend it twice like that I would have had it before September if it hadn't been for that but um my last document which was my diploma I got September 19th so September 19th uh, everything was set and ready to go I had it in my like folder and everything was just chilling I had everything all set to go um, and I still didn't know by this point if I had an interview. Keep that in mind. So, um, and you'll find that a lot of people um, do do their documents early, early-ish. Um, I found a cacao chat. Cacao essentially is. Where oh, my phone? Bye. Aha. My phone's right here. So, cacao, 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 cacao is um, a messaging app that is used quite heavily in Korea and I found this chat of applicants that are applying to Epic for spring intake and um, they've just become like such a support, so we're such a like close-knit community, positive community and every intake tends to have a group. So if you want to download the app on your phone, super easy, it's free, you can also put it on your desktop and um, all you have to do is like type Epic fall or epic spring intake enter the year and it'll show up most likely or you can just create it and other people will find it and join you can also share on the epic um, Facebook site which you are able to join once you apply back to the timeline I'm sorry to digress um, so September 19th got my last document September 20th so the very next day literally the next day I got my email notification that I had an interview scheduled so, if you are applying directly, most interviews started about, like, first week of September. Um, for those who applied, like, right at midnight, August 1st, they had, like, the first, um, whatchamacallit, interviews, okay? I happen to be one of the first 11 of the recruiting applicants who got interviews, um, which blows my mind. And I'm here thinking my interview is going to be, like, October 15th. October 10th. Mm -mm. My interview was October 1st at 9.20 a.m. Korean Standard Time. Um, if you're applying directly, you get to pick your ideal interview time slot. Like, you get a choice. I don't really know what it looks like because I didn't do that route, but other people told me, like, there's a few different time options. Get, open it up. Pick it quickly because the other people are, are, you know, picking at the same time too. So if you're not quick, you're going to be left with like a slot that you might not really like, like 3 o'clock in the morning type of deal. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, please forgive me. My uh, camera died, so I may be a bit different. The lighting might be a bit different. Just kind of nothing I can really do. Anyway, as I was saying, I... Um, that if you're applying directly, you get to pick your time slot. If you're applying through a recruiter, you kind of get told. They do pick within your availability that you do um, mark in your application when you first apply to Epic. Um, so don't worry too much about it. Even though um, my interview was October 1st, like in Korea, it was Sunday night for me here in the States. So do make sure you check your time uh, zone difference um, just in case. And yeah. So 
I had my interview Sunday night. I woke up Monday morning from, with an email from 3 o'clock in the morning that uh, I had passed my interview and I would, you know, be ready to go. So I confirmed and I just made a few small changes and I was ready to ship my documents this morning, which was October 2nd. And that's essentially what I did. Um, keep in mind your changes may vary and that will affect your time you know time table as well as the results from your interview may vary i don't know why i a got an interview so early in this process because literally like a handful of people who applied through a recruiter have had their interviews let alone like i can count on my fingers how many have found out that they've passed and have sent their documents in okay um secondly um, I just, I didn't have to like change my lesson plan or my essays and sometimes you do. So all I had to do is quick changes and I was ready to send my stuff in. And it is set to arrive in Korea October 5th. So I will hopefully, fingers crossed, be a part of the first batch of those who get their documents sent and their applications given out to um, different, you know, provinces uh, in Korea. But um, yeah that's pretty much my timeline and like i said it's all really gonna vary um just between like how you apply when you apply those who applied right in the middle of going through the application process directly got um interviews super quickly and there are people who applied august 1st the recruiters who still haven't heard back about their interview so don't worry if you're hearing or seeing a whole bunch of people passing their interviews or getting interviews and you haven't because your timeline is just it's just gonna vary and that's the thing about epic everything is up in the air and it all varies i still don't know how i got everything in and ready to go so early i'm um, going through a recruiter i am so thankful for that because it means um that I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, placed earlier as well um, so that I can, you know, get my, uh, the, the process after that is you get placed once your documents have been, you know, accepted, you get placed and you find that out. This, we found out, um, we're going to find out somewhere between late November to like mid-January. That's the time period you can wait for your placement, which is, once again, quite long. Um, but uh, from there on, you get your contract once you accept, and you then can apply for your visa. So um, I'm in the waiting period. I'm waiting for my documents to A, get to my recruiter, and B, get accepted. And once that happens, I'll kind of let you guys, I'll do another video on this whole process of, okay, now you've been accepted, now what? type of deal. It's called the big wait, um, and it is a very big wait, but it's one that just is filled with a lot of excitement, and this is a, such an exciting process. Um, don't worry, about, there's going to be like bad rumors of people not getting placed. The only reason why you'd get waitlisted or not placed is if your documents are not ready to go like by late November you know that's the only reason why you might not get placed um, and it also just varies also upon like how many positions are available for that um, intake fall tends to have a lot less than spring um, which is another reason why I applied in spring um, and yeah I really do wish you the best of luck really try it I'm, I know it's so much easier said than done but don't overthink this all it isn't as difficult as you're initially going to think um, but it also is you know a bit of it's a tedious process in terms of getting all your documents and making sure everything is good I can't tell you how many times I've checked rechecked 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 all of my documents before sending them so um you know it it's tedious but it is doable so many people do it and you are worthy of going to Korea as long as you're going for the right reasons but we'll talk about that in our interview um, video and yeah I hope you found this helpful and um, best of luck in your journey to epic and yeah I'll see you in my next one bye